to uh, Bombay hook. Uh, this ringneck pheasants can be uh, fairly common out in the cornfields at certain times of the year. If you're lucky, you can get a, a nice close photo. Here um, on the map here, Jersey Turnpike down to uh, the Bombay hook. It's that little pentagram. And you can see it's north of Cape May. Um, and it's about the same distance about from Croton, it's about three hours and 15 minute drive to uh, Bombay Hook. And here's the close up with the Delaware Bay. Uh, again, you can see how it's north of Cape May um, and Cape May uh, Peninsula. And um, besides uh, Bombay Hook is around 12,000 acres, I believe, of, of tidal, uh, tidal wetlands. And um, there's a lot of other preserves by it. So um, it's worth stopping at some of these other areas. Uh, some are not that improved anymore. Um, as you get down to some of the southern ones here, like Prime Hook, there's a lot of Phragmite. But um, it, it'll bring you up to the coast, and you can see things off the coast. Um, uh, one way I have done is I have taken a ferry over um, in one direction and then drive back the other direction. Um, uh, in the spring, Cape Penelopen can be really good for migrating birds. You know, they'll fly up the coast and they don't want to cross if you have northwest winds. Um, so they may hang out on this side. And, and you're going to have uh, good migrant days at, uh, at uh, Bombay Hook. Um, or any any one of these places. A friend of mine who uh, passed a couple of years ago now, um, he grew up in Philadelphia and Bombay Hook was his uh, favorite place in the world. And he probably knew it better than anybody. And he found a, a lot of first time birds there when he was younger. Um, his name was Sammy Orr. Um, he was one of the top birders I ever uh, met and uh, incredible photographer. But as soon as he retired, he gave up photography totally. He uh, was a photographer for the Army. And, um, and this was one of the last trips uh, going to Bombay Hook. Um, they, there's a drive loop there. And um, whenever he went, uh, he drove the loop more than once. And, and any time, uh, it's the same with, uh, with Foresight Brigantine that anytime you drive a loop, you're going to see something else the next time around. You know, you, you, uh, it's very easily to drive by a uh, bird or, or other wildlife. And, um, and birds will be active to different times of the day. Um, one of my recommendations, um, if you go certain times of the year, I have bug repellent or a bug shirt. <laughs> If you even brush the grass on the side of the way, the road, you're going to get dog ticks on you for sure. I, I, uh, um, if you go on to the website, you'll see a lot of comments about the bugs and the uh, dog ticks. Um, I like uh, the first week of May because the bugs aren't quite as bad. Um, but you, you may not have the same, uh, same number of birds and and every season you're going to be finding different birds um it's it's well known for waterfowl but um late fall they have hunting in some areas so you have to watch for that um the um if if you like to eat bring your food with you uh, because there's not much right around uh bombay hook as far as uh, buying any uh, decent food you know, so make sure you, you pack a cooler when you come in. Um, uh, it, here's just some information. Uh, um, it, it opens uh, half an hour before sunrise and half an hour uh, after sunset. It's still open. Uh, the visitor center, uh, it's been closed right now. So, um, uh, but they do have restrooms here. Um, and let's see, uh, 
And, and they also talk about um, you can't use recordings in any National Wildlife Refuge now to, to call in birds. Uh, you could fish, but um, it's becoming a, a problem with, a, with um, everybody has easy access to bird calls on their phone. And um, it, it can be distressing uh, for some birds or it can get some birds that overshoot their territory uh, to stay because they think there's, there's like species around. So the last uh, about four years now, they've had a Swainson's warbler at Higby's Beach in, um, in uh, Cape May Point. And um, uh, people play the calls so they could see it because it's a very secretive bird. And, and the bird's been coming back every year and not, uh, not breeding because there's no females there. You know, and, and maybe it would have uh, relocated if it didn't hear another bird calling back to her, to, to it. Um, one of the, the great things now about uh, the internet is uh, if you go online, they have recent bird sightings. So through eBird, uh, their list, this is, uh, is the, uh, the 26th of, uh, okay, Monday. And uh, these are some of the sightings that they had. And if you scroll down this, this is just one, probably one section of an eBird list. If you go online and scroll down, you'll get multiple eBird lists and, um, and really get a good idea of what to expect when you go down there. So you could, you could kind of look, uh, you know, a, a few days out before your trip, um, what you're going to see. So you, they've already have a, a good number of avocets. Uh, you can see towards the top of this. And, um, and they have uh, black neck stilts, which breed there. You know, and that's really one of the target birds for people when they go down there. Um, you, you have the, these different impoundments that you drive around. And uh, tide, um, if you pay attention to the tide, it could push the birds closer to you or further away. Um, this is a, a wave of shorebirds that may have been kicked up by a, a falcon or something. But um, uh, that's uh, maybe Sheerness Pool. Um, here's a black neck stilt with, uh, you know, working some of the pools. Um, you, you could go down there and see dozens or, or maybe be lucky enough to see some chicks and, uh, and more shots of them. And, uh, and your car can be the best blind and it, it, also, uh, it also helps you from, uh, uh, with protection from the mosquitoes or the, uh, the uh, green-headed flies which uh, could be even more torturous to mosquitoes. And then avocets, uh, these are some other birds you can see there. Um, a lot of different shorebirds, black bellied plovers, and uh, mixed flocks. You see black bellied plover in here and dunlins, and uh, some peeps. Um, here you have a phalarope. Um, and, uh, and some dowagers and uh, yellow lakes. And I'm sure Tom could pick out some other shorebirds in here. And uh, at Kildare's, you'll find them right around the visitor center. Um, Lee sand, sandpipers, spotted sandpipers. Uh, we drove into a parking lot and there's one feeding right in the parking lot. Um, when we were down there the last time. Um, uh, well, it's, uh, the, the shorebird list goes on and on. Um, one of the, uh, the top shorebirders of all time, Claudia Wiles, it was her favorite spot. She was from DC and she uh, led a trip that I didn't go there. Um, my wife went and they had curlewed sandpiper and, and white winged tern. Um, you know, so you just never know what you're going to find when you go to these places. You know, it, it's kind of, you just have to look at it as a big dinner plate and there's a lot of food on that plate and the birds are going to stop there. 
um, a buff uh, breasted uh, buff um, yeah uh, sandpipers. Uh, this is actually shot in Cape May, but you'll find them down there too. Um, you have these boardwalks going out into the salt marsh. And um, as long as you're out there when the mosquitoes aren't bad, you can spend quite a bit of time. And usually the first week of May, it's not too bad. And um, you, you'll get uh, some opportunities to, to get some nice photographs. Uh, tree swallow here. Um, uh, seaside sparrows are all over. Um, this was shot from that trail. Um, they just get up there and sing away. And um, you also get uh, salt marsh sparrows too. Um, a lot of marsh wrens, uh, you can catch them building their nests. Um, again, singing away, very easy to find. And you may find sedge wrens, they've been recorded uh, uh, breeding there. Uh, clapper reels are very common. Uh, you, you may have trouble finding them in the grass sometimes. At low tide, if you just still, they'll, they'll come out like that and feed on the edges a lot of times. Uh, there's still uh, bobwhite quail down there. Uh, they were reported there, I think, on the 25th of this month or the 24th. Um, and that's something that's really disappeared. Uh, I, I don't even know if there's any population now out in Long Island. Uh, that's the last place where I saw them, where they were breeding. And they've disappeared in the last 20 years. They disappeared from K May Point, and they tried to reintroduce them a couple of years ago, and they didn't last the winter. Um, here's a little video. You, you can find snipe. There were some reported. And you just, your, your car is the best blind for this. I took this from my car and it was a totally oblivious to me. You leave the scope inside or the camera lens and just roll down the window before you pull up to it. And um, it's amazing what you can see and photograph from your car. Um, rough wing swallows. Um, you know, just just by the entrance. Um, Gullbill turns, uh, Caspian turn, and and uh, and Fosters. Um, it's it's really good for herons and egrets. Uh, they talk more about the end of the summer being better, but um, I kind of thought this was a mirror image. They. Uh, you know, you never know when you're going to go out there what you're going to see, and everything the great blue heron did, the uh, the snow egret did, and then you also get other herons that want to photobomb. Um, bitterns, um, you have to work for these. Um, it's amazing how they can disappear into the reeds. Um, I was on a hawk watch one time and there's one out by the side. You had 30 people there and nobody saw it and, um, until one person spoke up. And I'm not going to say who that was. Um, least bitterns, there's a freshwater impoundment there. They breed there. But this one was actually I found because of Ann Swain at, uh, at Foresight Brigantine. Uh, they had seen it, and then I found it building a nest. I went there and staked it out. Egrets, uh, great egrets, and, and uh, night herons, young black crowned night herons. And the, the breast on these is a little chunkier head. The breast is more smudged. And, and I look at these as more like a Christmas tree on the, on the wing instead of a triangle, like the yellow crowned night herons. And they're, they're more finer streak in the front. And you see that thin neck and smaller head with the oversized bill compared to the head. And then another displaying. And um, a lot of these shots were taken at the Ocean City uh, Visitor Welcome Center in Jersey. And uh, now's a perfect time of year to drive down there. And here's a, uh, 
a bored or hungry um, yellow crown night heron. And uh, a little uh, parenting with, uh, with young uh, glossy ibis at the rookery. And cattle, cattle egret has become a harder egret uh, to see. Um, it's, they still consider reportable down in Cape May. And uh, tricolored herons, which we don't see that much up in New York anymore. They used to be more common down by Jamaica Bay. And, uh, and a little blues, which we really never see them like this in, in Westchester in full breeding uh, display. They, they seem to be passing through when we see an adult. And uh, now a, uh, an expanding bird is uh, white ibis and then some laughing gulls to the right. Um, these were reportable down in Cape May when people saw them and they said, please stop reporting them because you can report them every day. And they actually overwintered in, uh, in Southern Jersey this year. Um, a glossy ibis, a really subtle colors, beautiful bird. And little greens, which you see up here more commonly. And then raptors, you could at any time see a merlin out there hunting or, or uh, in migration. And peregrines any, any time of year down at Bombay Hook. A lot of muskrats, uh, they have beaver there and they, they report neutra now too, uh, down in Bombay Hook. So they've ex expanded from being introduced down in, uh, in Florida. Um, they've expanded up to, uh, into Delaware at least, maybe even Southern Jersey. Um, a good place for butterflies. Uh, this is uh, Henry Zulfin that I found on one of the roads there. Uh, their host plant is a uh, holly, um, which is a lot of holly uh, in the forest down there. And uh, coral banded hair streak. Um, another, it's, we, we'll get it up here, but it's, uh, I see it much more regularly down in uh, Delaware or Southern Jersey. Uh, Fowler's toad, they like sandy areas. Um, they're, they're out on Long Island also. I've never seen one in Westchester. Uh, they don't do well in rocky area. If you go to, uh, when they're breeding, um, they're very noisy. And uh, at certain times of year, you'll find them all over the road. When you're in Bombay Hook, you want to be very careful driving because you, you, um, you'll get a lot of uh, amphibians and reptiles crossing the road uh, or just sunning in the road. Um, I've had a lot of firsts down, uh, down in uh, Bombay Hook. Uh, this is a cricket frog. It's actually smaller than a, uh, a spring peeper, if people are familiar with that. You have these down there in southern Jersey. And then um, a stink pot turtle or, uh, or maybe a mud turtle. And um, it looks pretty big in this photo, but that shows you the size of it. Um, and uh, they do give an odor. Um, and then you have water snakes. Uh, they'll sit out in the road and, and sun. I, I saw a number of black snakes and, and black racers down there. And this was a lifer for me. Um, this is a worm snake. So I had never found one before. They're in Southern Jersey. Uh, they're maybe in Long Island. I don't know, but they're down in Bombay Hook. And, um, I found this by, I tend to, uh, I went on a trip one time to Costa Rica with Bedford Audubon and they called me uh, Charlie Log Turner. Um, I, I couldn't pass a log without turning it. And if you're down in Costa Rica and you turn a log, you want to turn it towards you. So if there's a poisonous snake, you have the log between you and it. And I would see a log and everybody would take 10 steps back. Um, but, um, I turned a log down in Bombay hook and it fell apart. And this was in the middle of the log. So they're very hard to see. 
and I had been looking for longer than I care to say. Um, painted, uh, excuse me, I want to say painted turtle. Um, box turtle, uh, when you get down to southern Jersey and Delaware, they just, the uh, color really pops on them, much more than the box turtles we have up here. Um, and then you have diamondback terrapins. Uh, at low tide, you'll see them all over uh, across the channels, uh, sunning. And um, the patterns on them are, are, are unique on each one. You look at, at the, uh, the head here with more of the elongated stripes and the patches on the back. And, and this one is more dotted and, and it's just happy to be there. You can see it's got a big smile on its face. Um, but uh, if you, you like turtles, um, you'll see a lot of turtles down there. Um, especially when you get into June when they're, where they're going to breed. Um, you're, you're into the southern species now, uh, uh, blue grosbeaks. I, I know somebody had one recently up here, but uh, they're regular occurrence. The last couple of times down there I've had them. Um, uh, brown thrashers are very common down there. Uh, chats are very common. Uh, they're probably more common than um, or just as common as catbirds down there. It's uh, uh, really, I found it very easy to find chats when you're in the right habitat. Orchard Orioles and, and Baltimore Orioles. Um, you, you'll have summer tanagers move through. Um, there's a lot of uh, southern species that you're more likely to see, like pythonotary and the wooded swamps down there. Uh, you'll find pythonotary warbler. Um, Yellow-throated, you find uh, any pine areas with pines, you'll find yellow-throated warbler and pine warblers. A common yellow throat are still common down there. I, I find it's harder and harder to call common yellow throats common in a lot of areas they used to be up here. Um, the power line cut at T-Town used to have them all along the power line cut and now it seems they get one or two. Um, white Iberios, are, uh, you'll hear them all along the road as you're driving. I mean, you can stop anywhere and pish and, and they'll pop. Uh, here's another shot of a common yellow throat. Uh, Tohees are common, a lot of scrub down there. And uh, we tend to show the males all the time, so I threw a female in there. Uh, kingbirds. And you wish there were more to eat some of the green-headed flies. Uh, field sparrows in certain areas. When you first drive in, they have fields too, where you may see uh, bobolinks or meadowlarks coming in. Um, and then right around the building, you get a lot of activity around the visitor center. So when you first drive in, you want to park at the visitor center, use the restrooms and, uh, and bird bird that area before you go back in. Um, the first place I usually see a chat when I go in is the maintenance yard right after the visitor center. Um, you'll get barred owls back in the woods. Um, when I was there the last two, uh, two Mays, uh, early the first week of May, I was shocked at the number of bald eagles out feeding around at low tide. I, uh, I counted well over 30 bald eagles out on, uh, on mud flats and trees on, on top of the, uh, the salt marsh, um, just everywhere, a lot of interaction, a lot of, uh, of uh, fish that get trapped in the tide. And, and uh, this shot, a lot of ospreys down there, uh, they, they have towers around, you see them close. And I just wondered who was screaming louder, the osprey or the fish? Um, and you can see why the fish were screaming. And this was actually a banded bird, but I'll give $100 to anybody who could read that band. Um, Harriers uh, are supposedly still breeding there. 
Of course, this one was held in the hand, but I love this shot because of the uh, a full adult male with, and their eyes really got lemon yellow. And you can see kites fly over. Um, I don't think they have any record of them nesting in the park. They're not on their nesting list, but uh, they definitely fly by. Uh, so that's uh, a Mississippi kite. Uh, vultures are, are uh, tough enough to look at, and, but when they look like they have the mange, it's, uh, um, the only their mother could love them. Uh, they have Pikeville grebes uh, recorded as, uh, as breeding there. Um, I haven't seen them breeding, but if you get the opportunity to see uh, young grebes, they're really a, a showy bird. And coots are also reported to breed there. Um, this is, a, you have a lot of barn swallows down there, a lot of swallows, but I, I put this, this bird is saying, ah, oh. you, you, you could see with its mouth open, this was outside a restaurant on hot pavement. And, and a lot of birds have trouble with mites. And so they'll sunbathe um, to, or sit, or lay on the hot pavement to kill the mites. So, they, uh, so there was a bunch of swallows coming down right in front of this restaurant on the hot pavement um, to, to help uh, get rid of their parasites. And then uh, a kingfisher with a fish. And when they swallow it, uh, one cover um, covers their eyes. So it may be a protection thing to protect their eye from uh, fins. And there he's finished it. And uh, just a combination with the uh, opportunity to see waterfowl down there. Uh, they list blue winged teal as breeding down there. Um, so that's, uh, I don't know of any close place to us up here, Anne. Do you, uh, blue winged teal breeding? Maybe Montezuma? And what do you think, Michael? Teal. What's that? Or Tom? Yeah, I was thinking Montezuma. Yeah. Uh, a widgeon, uh, American widgeon. And uh, Delaware is the first place I, I, this is not from Delaware, this shot, but it's the first place in a wildlife management area in the winter that I found a Eurasian widgeon on my own. You know, and, and um, Delaware and going down to Chincoteague is really a great place for, um, for winter and waterfowl. Um, it, it tends to stay open. They get thousands of geese, uh, snow geese at Bombay Hook, and you get uh, trumpeter swans also. Uh, wood ducks. Um, this, uh, this female wood duck sure had her hands full. Um, wood ducks egg dump. So um, we don't know how many moms were responsible for these. And a few years ago, up in, uh, in the Yorktown marsh or swamp by the bike trail, uh, wood duck raised a, uh, a hooded merganser. Uh, they also egg dumped. So they were successful in getting one of their young raised by a wood duck. Um, ruddy ducks, you may get some late, late migrants, so you gotta get to see them in breeding plumage. I heard uh, up in Lake Carmel, which is great for waterfowl up in Putnam County, uh, they have some breeding plumage, uh, at least last week, they had some breeding plumage ruddy ducks. And this bill is not uh, as blue as they'll get. Um, shovelers, I've seen them. Uh, I, they may breed down there. I've seen them in mid-May in Bombay Hook. And uh, in the winter, the uh, tundra swans and uh, if you watch, if you watch the uh, tundra swans feed, a lot of ducks will follow them around because they can reach further down into the water to pull up uh, uh, weeds and grasses. And 
they're less aggressive than the mute swans. So I, I've watched and um, the mute swans will chase the other ducks away from them. Um, you, once in a while you get one that, that is more tolerant, but you could have seven tundra swans out here and you'll have a duck with each tundra swan. Where the mute swans, you might have 20 mute swans and you'll have one duck with one of these uh, mute swans uh, looking to grab, grab food as they bring it up from deeper in the water. And then again, the ringneck pheasant, um, this is from the car and just the colors uh, that you get um, from a ringneck. And, uh, and taking the Cape May Ferry, um, I call it the, uh, the poor man's pelagic trip. It's about 18 miles across uh, the Delaware Bay. They have a sunset cruise. Um, one of the newer ships, they, they used to show uh, uh, Disney videos to keep the kids occupied. Um, it has food on board. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's as good as the food we had up in Canada on the, uh, on the ferry boat, but uh, it's edible. And uh, if you pay attention when you're going across, um, you, you can see all sorts of birds uh, from the ferry. Um, uh, this is a parasitic Jaeger. Um, they're, they're coming in to chase the terns probably right around now down in, uh, in Delaware Bay. And you can see dark and light, you can get Pomeranian um, also. Um, at any time, you can see brown pelicans fly by. Um, earlier in March, you'll get this um, uh, flocks of gannets in the thousands feeding on, ba on bait fish or schooling fish. So it's, it's kind of like a giant sewing machine with these birds kind of coming up and diving down into the water. So you see the splashes underneath there. And um, there'll still be some down um, in Cape May. If you take a ferry across in mid-May, you'll still have some and some of the younger, darker birds you can see on the left here is uh, an immature or over on the right immature. And then red-throated loons, um, well, well into late May, you'll see them. Um, if you get lucky, you might even have one coming into breeding plumage uh, or in breeding plumage uh, before they migrate north. They seem to be one of the later nesters up there. Um, I did have them nesting in Canada and they were just doing their breeding and that was in July, beginning of July. Um, you less likely to see this time of year, but in the winter, they're all over the Delaware Bay. Um, so any time of year, you might see some different things. You see a lot of dolphins. Uh, they have seen uh, humpback whales from the uh, ferry boat. Um, and you could, uh, you could even, some people will even take it uh, two ways where they, uh, they leave their car so it's cheaper and they do a walk on and they ride across um, looking for uh, water birds. You could also see Wilson's fowler rope from, uh, uh, excuse me, um, well, you could see fowler ropes, but Wilson's storm petrel. Um, on the rocks uh, coming in and out of both sides, the uh, jetties, you'll get ruddy turnstones and uh, purple sandpipers uh, feeding on the jetties. Um, They've, they've had uh, a few years ago that a Franklin's gull sitting on the jetty. Um, you, you just, uh, you're kind of at a crossroads of migra migration, so you don't know what uh, you may see. Um, this year was a very good year over by Delaware. Uh, they have the shoals off there to block the uh, waves coming in to the uh, port. And I just wish the uh, ferry boat would slow down and go a little closer to the shoals, so the, the uh, rocks, so you could see all the birds out there. Because it, when I went by the last time, uh, uh, they, there was a lot of stuff out there that you couldn't make out. Uh, flying across any time, here's a bunch of uh, great blue herons migrating across the bay. Um, they actually do a spring watch. Um, 
at Coral Avenue to see birds fly, fly off the bay. And you could do it on either side. You could do it Cape Hennel open, um, looking in the fall. They, they, um, one year they reported monarchs migrating. Uh, they took off in the morning um, when the wind was right. They, they estimated um, it was like 800 a minute or something like that flying out. And they saw a wave coming from the other side. Um, so people went to the shore and just saw waves of, uh, of monarchs migrating. 